Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel Kalanadi. Today I want to talk about a novella that I just finished reading, which is The Flowers of Vashnoi by Lois McMaster Bujold. This is a new Vorkosigan novella. It is set pretty far into the internal chronology of this series, which has been running for 30 years. I mean, there's 16 or 17 books out now. I have read all of them, but given that this takes place about four years after A Civil Campaign, which is one of the much later books in the series, I'm going to describe the plot and that may uh, spoil some things for previous books. Do skip that if you don't want to be spoiled by any of this. So The Flowers of Vashnoi is told from the perspective of Ekaterine, who is now married to Miles Vorkosigan. They've been married for a few years. They have a couple of children now. And Ekaterine is a botanist and gardener who is interested in working with like native Bahrain plant life as well as earth plants. And she has been working with Dr. Enrique Borgos and his butter bugs, which were introduced in a civil campaign to much comedic relief. <laughs> the butter bugs basically eat things voraciously and then secrete what's actually an edible substance. And there are applications for this, of course, for food supply and such. But in this story, Ekaterin and Borgos have modified the butter bugs into what they call rad bugs. They eat plants and then concentrate and secrete radioactive waste for cleanup. This is important because the Vorkosigan family owns a piece of land, uh, Vorkosigan's Vashnoi, which was nuked back to the Stone Age during the Sidagandan invasion and occupation of Barrayar. There's a lot of history, of course, of this plot of land. It's mentioned multiple times in the series, but for the purposes of the story, it, you all you have to know is it is a radioactive wasteland. It's been about 100 years, multiple generations have passed, and you can't still live there. It's still uninhabitable, but a lot of the plant life and the animal life has come back, and um, Ekaterin and Miles uh, want to help the land improve. They hope to speed up the process of decontaminating it, basically. So Ekaterin and Borgos have set up a trial run with the rad bugs on Vashnoi. And uh, when they show up to check on it for the first time, half of the rad bugs are gone. And they're like, well, we should probably go find them because it's not a good idea for radioactive bugs to be going wherever they want to. And in pursuit of the rad bugs, Ekaterin and Borgos stumble upon some things that have been going on on Vashnoi for a very long time. I think this story is about the long-running theme of the Vorkosigan family's sense of responsibility for the people who live on their lands. The Barayar is a feudal system that has been yanked into the modern age and is now under a lot of scrutiny and a lot of pressure from more liberal, progressive um, influences in, in Bahrain society, but also external from other planets and colonies and such. And families like the Vorkosigans um, are very active in this, in bringing um, these these progressive things to their people who live on their lands and that they're responsible for. Things like establishing hospitals for the poor people or schools to educate people in the backwoods. And then, for the Vokoskans in particular, the people who live near or even on Vashnoi, which is radioactive, it looks beautiful, it looks like you can live there now, but if you live there, it will slowly kill you. And what should the Vorkosigans do about that? Especially for people who have quite a bit of right of saying where they want to live, like that is their home. And it, do, it does focus on, you know, this long running consequences. You don't just have one story, one event, and then it's over with. You're talking about a war and its consequences, physical and emotional and cultural. And that doesn't just stop after the original generation is dead. Every generation after that um, has their own way of approaching the problem and dealing with it. And what they decide to do may not be what the next generation agrees on. And that's the interesting thing, of course, with multiple generations of people like um, Miles's grandfather and his relationship with his grandfather and what his grandfather decided to do with people who lived in Vashnoi versus what Miles knows and he does and now what Ekaterin is um, involved in. 
I think there have been quite a few Rakosigan stories, um, even novellas, maybe like The Mountains of Mourning, that have tackled this issue. Um, they're some of the best stories in the series, I think. Some of the very emotional ones, very much about the Vorkosigan family as people relating to other people. And, you know, it's about them using their privileges for the right thing in many ways. So, in, in many ways, this story was not highly original. I thought it was very rewarding as a longtime reader of the series. There's so much buildup, there's so much context. Nothing in this makes any sense if you haven't read a lot of the previous stories, if you don't already know who the characters are, if you don't already know a lot of the backstory of um, the family and of Barayar's history, the whole context of why this piece of land exists in the first place, for example. But with all of that buildup, it was, it was really rewarding, and especially because it's about Ekaterin, and I really love her. She is such a wonderful foil to Miles, and this is a story, I think, about Ekaterin really coming into her own uh, as a person, as a professional, and as a member of the Rokosigan family. It is nice to have stories that aren't always about Miles because Oh my goodness, he he gets things done, he's fascinating, but he's also manic, you know? And Ekaterin is just as deep feeling and moral as he is, I think, but she's much more sedate, I would say, personality-wise. I really like that juxtaposition there, and I like stories from her perspective. They're very different from Miles' stories. But like I said, it's just not highly original. It's been done before. If you really liked Vorkoskin stories like this in the past, this one is going to be more of the same. It's going to really deliver. It's a solid, good-feeling story. I give it high marks for that. But not an incredibly scintillating story, just a revisit to parts of the things that really made the series great in the past. I suspect at this point that the Vorkosigan series is mostly over, and so I'm really just pleased that we got this little story here, even if it's not a full novel. I don't have much expectations for there being more with these characters, so if there are any of these little things that Bujol decides to drop on her fans, I'll be more than happy for them. But I also kind of feel like the series might, might be over, and it's, it's a, at a good point where you can just leave it and walk away and is, it's just great the way it is. So, if this novella sounds good to you and you want to jump into the Vorkosigan universe, I highly recommend it. This is one of my favorite series of all time, and Bujold is one of my favorite writers of all time as well. She's, she's an amazingly solid writer who does fantastic characters. If you want to get into the Vorkosigan series, I think it's generally recommended that you read it in internal chronological order rather than in publication order for the most part. In fact, I think that's what Bujold herself recommends. At some point I made an entire video about the reading order and where to start. It's a really old video though, and I would simplify things and say either start with Shards of Honor and its direct sequel Barayar, or jump into The Warrior's Apprentice. The difference here basically is that Shards of Honor and Bar Rayar are the backstory of how Miles Vorkosigan's parents, Errol and Cordelia, met and how they had Miles, which is really important backstory because it explains what happened to Miles physically, which is a huge part of his personality makeup and what drives him. Warrior's Apprentice is the first story that focuses on Miles, and he's the main character in most of the books in the series. So you could jump straight into that one and get straight to the Miles stories, and the events of Shards of Honor and Bar Rayar are certainly recapped and explained very well in multiple books in the series. I personally think that reading Shards of Honor first enriches the later experience a lot more, though. Take it however you want to. If you do start reading the series, let me know, because one of my greatest joys is knowing that I've turned people onto the Vorkosigan series. So anyway, that's The Flowers of Vashnoi. Maybe I need to start rereading the books and the series now. We'll see about that. But anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I will talk to you again soon. And until then, bye.